When Nintendo released the Game Boy Advance in 2001, it was something of a big deal. A considerably massive upgrade from the aging Game Boy handheld unit, whose only real significant update since its original 1989 inception was the addition of color in 1998, the Game Boy Advance had a little more portable power that allowed for a wider variety of games to be made and, perhaps more notably, more classic titles to be converted in slightly better quality than what was possible, or in some cases impossible, on the original Game Boy. Case in point, Doom. Released in 2001 by Activision and developed by David A. Palmer Productions, the same folks who would bring you that god-awful Attack of the Clones video game a year later, by the way, Doom is, well, it's Doom. You run around a little map, you shoot down zombies, you pick up the big guns, and you try to survive all the perils to reach the exit and all that stuff. Look, if you've dabbled in PC gaming back in the day, or on a PlayStation, or whatever the case may be, you probably already know about Doom. It's a fairly popular game that's gotten numerous sequels, spin-offs, knock-offs, and a shit pile of custom mods and stuff. Doom is fairly old hat by this point. This Game Boy Advance version of Doom is not based on the original PC version, but rather the various console ports of Dooms that you got in the 1990s, notably the Atari Jaguar, the Sega 32X, the 3DO, among others, which means no Cyber Demon or Spider Mastermind boss monsters, and some missing maps while the remaining levels in the game have been altered or simplified from their original forms. The game does give you the option of choosing from one of the three Doom episodes, Knee Deep in the Dead, The Shores of Hell, and Inferno, but this serves more as a level skip function than anything. Completing the final level of Knee Deep moves you to the first level of Shores of Hell with your arsenal intact while completing the final level of Shores warps you to the first level of Inferno with your gear in one piece. There's only one ending in GBA Doom and it's the one you get when completing the final level, so you're just better off starting from the beginning and playing all the way through, especially since the first level of Inferno might prove a bit raw. There's a save feature, but you can only save between levels rather than during actual gameplay, which is something you could have done on PC Doom. Strangely enough, the game doesn't allow you to save your game if you manage to reach the secret military base map, because nobody deserves to save at the military base. And what was something of a rare occurrence for non-PC ports of Dooms up to that point, GBA Doom had deathmatch functionality via the game link, it even has its own set of deathmatch levels for players to play in, assuming you could find other folks with their own copies of Doom to play with, if such folks exist in this day and age for that matter. Going into GBA Doom, setting aside content and other bits and bobs, my one area of concern was how it would control, and I'm happy to say that controlling Doom is serviceably responsive, reasonably straightforward, and entirely workable, even if I can't quite get the knack of, but I attribute that to being more used to a more sophisticated control scheme, for lack of a better term. Turning is smooth enough, there's no delay in terms of button input, I like that the open and run functions are combined into one button, you can strafe with the triggers, and if you want you could set your speed to always running, which I never use because sometimes walking works best. Like most ports, weapons are cyclic access and can sometimes feel intrusive during tense situations, but it's manageable for the most part and feels almost natural once you get the hang of it. And if you're not happy with the button configuration, Doom provides you with five other button configurations that just might suit you fine. Generally speaking, Doom plays fine. There might be occasions where the game would slow to a crawl when too much is going on, but by that same token it's not complete and utter horse manure. It runs smoothly enough, it's responsive enough, and if one could adjust to the various button layout that the game throws at you, it's good for a portable romp at least for the time. When it comes to the graphical prowess of GBA Doom, the results are surprisingly decent. Up close the monsters, textures, and other bits aren't too bad, not quite high resolution or anything like that, but you can make out what's what. Naturally, anything further out loses sharpness and blurs in the distance, almost to the point where everything starts blending in with each other, but for the most part, it looks the part, the frame rate's fairly smooth, runs at a decent speed when it isn't bombarded with straining slowdown, Graphical quality isn't too bad on a tiny GBA display, all things considered. Playing this on a Game Boy Player or anything with a significantly larger display will make the graphics look a bit on the blurry side, but it's not a complete loss. Indeed, Doom is one of those cases where it looks better playing on the small GBA screen than it does on a blown up display of a Game Boy Player. Of course, there are some minor graphical changes such as vanishing corpses, presumably to maintain performance of the game, as well as changing the blood color from red to green, presumably to... <laughs> I've got nothing. 
Also, this being released before the advent of the Game Boy Advance SP model, the game offers an option to play the game with static lighting, which gives every room the same bright lighting, which is useful for older model GBAs or those who want better visibility, which I imagine at the time would have been everybody. Thank God I never had an original GBA. Sound-wise, it's a bit of a mixed bag. A good majority of the sound effects and vocal bites from the PC original have made it intact, but there are some oddities here and there. For one thing, landing after long falls or hugging walls is a somewhat painful endeavor for your doomery for whatever reason. Aside from that, it's not all bad. The sounds are somewhat crisp and clear for the most part, as much as you could get on the GBA. Music, on the other hand, is not great. Yes, you have a good chunk of the familiar Doom tracks and some of them sound all right at best, but a good chunk of them are rather not good sounding. On top of that, the tunes don't play in the right levels. The first level's tune is normally plays on the second level, while the original iconic tune that everyone's familiar with plays in the military base, and it sounds awful. 32X Doom has better sounding music than this. I'm being completely sincere, by the way, when I say that. Believe me. Overall, Doom on Game Boy Advance was a pleasant surprise. At most, I was expecting a so-so semi-competent version of Doom that might have a hiccup or two, but this was a surprisingly decent adaptation of the IT Software Classic. Runs at a smooth speed, the frame rate's pretty good, the visuals aren't too bad, and it plays well enough to be enjoyable, what with the multiple control setups it offers. I'm sure nowadays you could find better portable iterations of Doom on one of those Android devices or whatever, but GBA Doom is actually pretty good all things considered, and a worthy addition to the GBA collection if you're into that sort of thing. Now, if only I could get my hands on a copy of that PlayStation version. Oh well. Someday. Someday. But not today. Good night.